From the heart of Philly, this is CBS News Philadelphia. While Joyride comes to an end, crashing end in Northeast Philadelphia, several kids are now in custody. Police say some of them are as young as 12 years old. And disturbing allegations against a Boy Scout leader and former teacher. He's accused of abusing a student, and authorities say there could be more victims. Say goodbye to the sunshine. The clouds are increasing as we get ready for our next chance for rain. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the News at 7, streaming on CBS News Philadelphia and on Philly 57. I'm Jim Donovan. And I'm Janelle Varel. Welcome to this Wednesday morning. Let's kick things off with that next weather forecast, shall we? Meteorologist Kate Bilo has more on the sun that's about to say goodbye, Kate. Yeah, we are seeing the sun disappearing pretty quickly here, Jim and Janelle. Started off bright this morning. It's still bright down the shore, but you can see how things have kind of clouded over here up in the Poconos. This is up in Hawley. This is Bethlehem. Again, looking just a little more dull than it did even just a half hour ago. And same story in Philadelphia. We started off with some sun and now the clouds are starting to roll in and showers creeping in from the west as the day goes on. So 50 degrees right now. We've got uh, winds not too bad. Southeast wind about six miles per hour. Dew points are creeping up a little bit, an indication that we have a little more moisture in the air as showers approach the region. You can see where the rain is right now. This first band producing some thunder as well. Now this is lifting and we'll move over the mountains of central Pennsylvania here, weakening a little bit. This first batch could reach parts of our area close to the noon hour. So I think the leading edge will fizzle a little bit, but there is more where that came from. Look at this little band of showers. That's going to lift through about noon. We've got more shower chances as we get into the afternoon. So again, we're not looking at a steady rain through the entire second half of the day, but it is going to turn uncertain settled and we're going to kind of cut off the warming as well. So warming up nicely as we get through about 11. We'll see a few breaks of filtered sun early and then it clouds up and here come the shower chances and temperatures dropping as well into the low 60s by 5 o'clock into the 50s by 8 o'clock tonight. And once these shower chances get in, we've got at least the chance for a little bit of rain right through the overnight hours and even into early tomorrow. Coming up, I'll tell you about a chill for tomorrow and we'll talk about what to expect as we head toward the weekend. For now, I'll send it over to Chandler Lutz with your morning traffic. Hi, Chandler. Good morning, Kate. We have one minor accident to tell you about. This is on the Vine Street Expressway as you travel westbound just before the Schuylkill Expressway. You can see here just one car involved. That part, that right lane is partially blocked and partially blocking that off ramp that takes you to the Schuylkill eastbound. So just watch out for that as you travel out the door. We're also over in KOP watching a lane closure in the northbound lanes at 202 right at Henderson Road to Solomon Boulevard. You will see that left lane PennDOT's blocking that off for road uh, road damage. We're not sure what's happening here, but we do know last summer there was that major sinkhole and the big repair project that needed to be done. So hopefully it's not related to a sinkhole, but we'll keep you updated there. Traveling KOP. Just a few minor delays here. SEPTA's new trolley route 15 is operating with a crew shortage issue, and New Jersey Transit River Line service is also delayed due to mechanical issues. Jim, back to you. Thank you, Chandler. Breaking overnight, Philadelphia police say six kids, some as young as 12 years old, are in custody after stealing two cars and going on a wild ride in Northeast. And that joy ride ended with one of the children in the hospital. CBS News Philadelphia's Jan Carabeo joining us now with what happened, how this all unfolded. Jan, good morning. Janelle and Jim, good morning. We're told that child has minor injuries. Police say it's a cut on the hand, but it certainly could have ended worse, especially when you consider these kids flipped one of the cars police say they stole and took on a joyride. Check it out. CBS News Philadelphia on scene there as police investigate. That stolen car right there upside down resting on its roof this morning near the intersection of Medford and Bell Green Roads in the Parkwood section of the city. Police say early this morning two cars were stolen just about a block away and at least two kids were in the car that flipped over. Investigators say one of the kids was able to get out and run to the second stolen car but they didn't get very far. That car was stopped by police around the corner about two blocks away on Richton Street. Six children are now in custody and police say some of them are as young as 12 years old. We spoke with a woman who owns one of the stolen cars. She says she didn't even realize anything was wrong until cops started banging on her door around 1.30 this morning. When police told her the age of the kids involved, she just could not believe it. I can't imagine any of my other kids doing any of that. Like, I mean, they're older now, but even back then, even them this age, 2016, 21, like, there's no way. Like, I, I can't even imagine. So, luckily, I mean, they didn't get very far, but yeah, it was kind of crazy. I and mean, we have to get the car fixed. Like, it is unsettling. Like, it's stolen, like, right from your house. 
Now, according to Philadelphia police data, more than 3,800 cars have been stolen already this year in the city. A previous CBS News Philadelphia investigation found that a high percentage of recent car thefts involved Kias and Hyundais. Police attribute that to a viral internet challenge that first emerged in 2021, showing how to easily steal those makes of cars in a matter of seconds. By the way, the two cars stolen this morning were both Hyundais. Jim and Janelle. All right, Jen, with those breaking details for us this morning, thank you for that. Now to a Boy Scout leader from Delaware County accused of sexually abusing one of his scouts. Authorities arresting Keith Steininger of Upland Borough yesterday, charging him with sexually abusing a student at Gerard College, which is a boarding school for boys in first through 12th grades. Steininger was a scout leader for a troop based at the school and taught there for 41 years before retiring in 2022. The Delaware County District Attorney says the alleged victim told his foster parent about the alleged abuse, and investigators believe there may be more victims. Usually child predators uh, don't just do it once. Um, and also from the uh, admission he made uh, to the victim that was recorded by our detectives, he talked about how he liked to show his affection for children. Uh, so it makes us believe that there may be other people out there that he inappropriately sexually assaulted as well. Steininger is now being held on $250,000 bail. And now to Philadelphia police issuing an arrest, arrest warrant for Pennsylvania State Representative Kevin Boyle. Boyle is accused of violating a protection from abuse order. Sources telling CBS News Philadelphia that Boyle allegedly texted his estranged wife, which is a violation of that protection order. Boyle represented parts of Northeast Philadelphia and Montgomery County in the State House. Since 2011, he's currently seeking his eighth term. We've reached out to Boyle's office and are still waiting to hear back. Family attorney for Atlantic City Mayor Marty Small says he has no intention of resigning. On Monday, the mayor and his wife, Laquetta Small, who is the superintendent of Atlantic City Public Schools, were charged with abusing their teenage daughter. Neither have commented, but the family attorney says both are completely innocent of any wrongdoing and will ultimately be vindicated. New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez could end up blaming his wife during his federal corruption trial. According to a newly unsealed court document, the uh, senator plans to testify that his wife led him to believe nothing illegal was taking place. Menendez and his wife are charged in a bribery scheme in which prosecutors say cash and gold bars were given to the couple in return for political favors. The trial is scheduled to begin next month. For uh, at least basketball fans here in Philly, a big game for the Sixers tonight at the Wells Fargo Center. Yes, they take on the Miami Heat in the play-in tournament. CBS Philadelphia's Ross Dimite joins us now to talk about the playoff implications. Morning, Ross. Good morning, guys. Yeah, win and they're in. Simple as that. And even if they lose, they would have another chance to potentially make it to the okay. playoffs. But let's just keep it simple and take care of business tonight, shall we? What a matchup we have. The Sixers and the Miami Heat, they faced off four times during the regular season and split the season series with each team winning two games. But you have to remember that Joel Embiid only played in one of those four games, a game the Sixers won. And the Sixers have been rolling ever since their big man came back from injury. The Sixers have not lost a game since Embiid came back from midseason meniscus surgery. He came back on April 2nd. They have won eight games in a row to end the regular season, and they now enter the postseason as arguably the hottest team in professional basketball, certainly a squad that most teams do not want to face in the first round. But first, they do have to get through the Miami Heat at home tonight. The Heat have made the playoffs each of the past four seasons. They've reached the NBA Finals twice during that time, losing both of their finals appearances. They're led by former Sixer Jimmy Butler, so you know they're a scrappy bunch that's built for the postseason. The Sixers players that we talked to are well aware of the challenge they face from playoff Jimmy in South Philly tonight. Since he's signed with the Heat, especially like he made two finals in four years, so I mean he showed that he rises up for those moments. So I mean we gotta be ready for him tomorrow. We know what Miami is about. You know, last year they made the finals as a playing team, so they're gonna come out extremely aggressive. They're gonna come out extremely competitive, and uh, they always do. All right, here's the situation. If the Sixers win against the Heat at home tonight, that would guarantee them a first round matchup against the number two seeded New York Knicks. If they lose, they would then play the winner of the Hawks Bulls play in game for the right to take on the top seeded Celtics in the first round. Guys, if you're asking me my pick, I would rather just win tonight, face the Knicks in the yeah. first round. They're uh, not nearly as good as the Celtics. And a lot of people think that if the Sixers can win tonight, that they could pull off the upset against the Knicks in the first round. We'll have to wait and see. Okay. Get it over with. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Ross. Yep. Appreciate it. See you